All right, so the last time we read, something kind of disturbing happened. Yeah, Do you remember? I forgot. Was I there? Um, Ivory attacked him. <laughs> Ivory kind of attacked him. She was very forcefully trying to uh, hypnotize him. And it's not really good to hypnotize somebody against their will, right? It's 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 pretty darn too and illegal, yeah. Um, so it's it's possible to hypnot hypnotize somebody if they're if like without them knowing it if they're like relaxed enough. But yeah. Anyway, he was not relaxed. He wasn't relaxed enough, obviously. But <clears throat> Brooklyn Feldman. I'm spending more time with the other kids than I have any summer. Maybe it's a mistake. Okay, it's definitely a mistake. I see the probing looks as people try to connect me with a family in the dining hall or figure out which cottage I'm living in. I'm smart about not giving anything away. I've been doing this for a long time after all, but Jet worries me. He's really sharp and he clearly doesn't trust me. With the two of us on Team Lizard, it's just not possible to avoid him. It's almost interesting to me to have a worthy opponent like that. Anyway, Needles is the main reason why this year is so different. I never minded being alone before. I was good at it. That was my life every summer as long as I can remember. I did a lot of reading. I took long walks in the woods. I enjoyed my own company, mostly because I didn't have any choice. But now that I'm on Team Needle, Team Lizard, looking after needles and making trips to Hedge Apple, I realize something. I'm happier. I ha like having people to talk to, even if the subject is refilling a motor launch with diesel or cleaning lizard poop out of a paint tray. My best friend on Team Lizard is Tyrell. Mostly because he doesn't act suspicious around me the way the other two do. He's a nice kid. Too nice to deserve a perma rash and a sister who wipes up the floor with him on a regular basis. I give him my behind the scenes oasis tour because let's face it, I know this place better than even Magnus. I could draw a map and not miss a single blade of grass. That's how much time I've spent wandering around avoiding people. For example, I bring Tyrell to my favorite tree trunk in the woods. It's four feet wide and must be a hundred years old. Bugs have hollowed it out to the point where it's practically a tunnel, and I show him my favorite spot half a mile down river. You can t step onto, out into this broad, flat rock in the saline. To reach it, you have to walk across the wreckage of an old boat that wedged across the shore. I wind up the unofficial tour at the water sports shed about 50 yards from the lake. What's so special about this? Tyrell asks. It's where they store the spare parts and fix the canoes and spring that spring a leak. Shh. Listen, I tell him. Sure enough, as we approach the metal building, we hear a sharp crack followed by several loud bangs and a maniacal laughter. Tyrell frowns. What's that? You'll see. It happens again. Thwack. Bang, bang, bang. And more raucous mirth. And a third time. Thwack. Bang, bang. Ow! Comes a cry of pain, along with, a mu with more laughing. I lead Tyrell to the corner of the shed where an opening in the metal provides a view inside. Amid the stacks of life jackets, oars, and paddle boards, three of the buddies stand in a square of ast astroturf in the center of the space. One of them raises a driver over his shoulders and takes a wild swing at a golf ball at his feet. Thwack! The thing takes off like a bullet, and the three men drop to the turf and cover their heads while the ball ricochets around the metal walls. Tyrell is amazed. What are they doing? I shrug. The Pathfinders are true believers in the Oasis way of life, but the buddies are just ordinary workers to keep the place running. They've got no TV, no phones, no internet, so they get creative. I wonder what Magnus would say, Tyrell muses. He knows. Last year, one of the dining hall staff got knocked unconscious. Tyrell's eyes widen. It was pretty cool. Ivory picked him up and carried him to the healthfulness center. He nods. Ivory could pick up the healthfulness center. And one of the Range Rovers, too, I add. You know, with her free hand. We can still hear the clang of golf balls bouncing off the metal as we start back toward the cottage. Tyrell points at the approaching figure. Is that Grace? What's eating her? Even from a distance, I can sense her agitation. Her cheeks are flushed and her body is so tense that she's walking with jerky steps like a chicken. Grace, I call. What's the matter? She hustles up to us, her expression tragic. Needles killed somebody. What? <laughs> Tyrell is horrified. Who? A mouse, she announces sorrowfully. A poor little brown field mouse. You scared the heck out of me, Tyrell exclaims. For a second there, I thought he might have gone around after Jet's throat with those needle teeth. Crazy as it sounds, that was my first thought too. It was almost that violent, Grace tells us mournfully. He struck like a cobra. The whole thing was over almost before it started. At least the poor mouse didn't suffer. 
Tyrell looks a little queasy. Well, I reason, I suppose that's pretty normal behavior, you know, for a carnivore. It's totally normal, she agrees sadly. That's the whole point. We've been keeping needles because we didn't think he could survive in the wild. But this proves he'd be just fine. We have to let him go. I'm taken aback. Needles is the only reason this summer is bearable. Better than bearable? And now we can't keep him anymore? Tyrell has another opinion. Maybe Needles can make it on his own. So what? Most dogs could look after themselves if they had to. That doesn't stop people from keeping them as pets. So we keep Needles. It's the same thing. It's not the same thing, Grace counters. There's no law against having a dog, but think how many rules we break just looking after one little lizard. She begins to count on her fingers. Keeping a secret pet, stealing a boat, sneaking a hedge apple, bringing back meat, bribing Brandon with chocolate. The whole canny thing wouldn't have started if it hadn't been for needles. It's gone too far. It's like we're spitting in Magnus's face every single day. It has to end. I'm about to give her an argument, but she said this magic word, Magnus. When Magnus enters the conversation, I exit. Well, we definitely can't do anything until we talk to Jet, Tyrell pulls in. Needles is his pet, too. I'm not thinking about Jet. I'm not even thinking about Needles. I'm ashamed to admit that I'm only thinking about my summer, the friends I've made, the fun I've had. Is this going to crash and burn once there are no more trips to Hedge Apple and visits to the rundown shed at the edge of the woods? We change direction and head to the service buildings past the Welcome Center. Tyrell is still insisting that we can't decide anything about Needles until Jet has a vote. Grace is adamant. Don't you agree that we've been breaking the rules and risking big trouble for too long? She asked Tyrell. I guess so, but she turns to me. What do you say, Brooklyn? We took in Needles because he was helpless, but he's not helpless anymore. I just nod. I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. Part of me knows that Needles or no Needles, we can't keep taking the launch to Hedge Apple without eventually getting caught. That would cause problems for the others, but for me, it would be a real crisis. Grace is triumphant. You see, there's already three of us who vote that Needles should be free. So even if Jed says no, he's already outvoted three to one. As we come up on the shed, look, something looks wrong. On the second glance, I realize why. The lock is off and the slider is open at least six inches. Tyrell points. Hey, we run the rest of the way. Grace gets there first, heaves the door wide, and we pound inside. The paint tray is overturned and up against the wall, Needles is gone. Tyrell and I wheel on Grace, who raises both hands to heaven. I didn't do it, honest. I wanted to, but somebody must have gotten here first. I drop to the floor, which is still wet from the spilled water. Tyrell and I search every inch of the shed. Outside, we run our hands through the tall grass and weeds. I even try to feel inside the gaps under the wooden frame. If Needles is hiding somewhere, I'm about to get a bite on my finger, and I won't soon forget. But my finger is safe. The lizard is nowhere to be found. Hey, what are you guys doing? I'm still flat on the ground with my hand under the shed when Jet shows up with a small bundle of hamburger wrapped in a napkin. Speechless, we stare at him as he peers into the shed and puts two and two together. What happened? How did he get away? It's for the best, Jet, Grace repeats the spiel she gave us about why Needles needs to be set free. Jet's normally calm face flames red. Why did you do that? You didn't have a right to do that. I didn't do it, Grace stands up to, to him. But however it happened, it was the right thing. I always thought Jet was above it all, too cool to get to let anything get to him. Until now, he gets down on his hands and knees and performs all our searches ten, times ten, moving outward from the shed in concentric circles. He even cups his palms to his mouth and hollers, Needles! a couple of times before Tyrell and I silence him. Shh, I hiss, someone will hear you. I want someone to hear me, Jet insists. I want Needles to hear me. Come on, Jet, Tyrell reasons. We all like Needles. But when did he ever come running when you called his name? When did he ever come running, period? Jet twists away from us and turns furious eyes on Grace. You're the one who said we had to have a lizard in the first place. You think I cared one way or the other if he drowned in the river or got snapped up by some hawk? He'll be okay, she begins. You made me care, he thunders. And now I'm supposed to turn it off just like that? He snaps his fingers. Because you're done with the poor little guy? Yeah, well, I'm done with you. I expect him to storm off after the great exit line. Instead, he lovingly washes out the paint tray, fills it with fresh water, and sets a little mound of hamburger on the dry part of the slope. In case he comes home, he explains, leaving the door about six inches open. Then he turns his back on all of us and walks away. Wow, Tyrell comments. I didn't think he'd get that upset. I didn't think Jack got that upset about anything. It's upsetting for all of us, Grace puts in, but he, we have to be strong for needles. Oh, please, I mutter. Maybe you didn't let him go, but you sure wanted to. 
I scanned the Oasis property in the adjoining woods. Needles could be anywhere by now, but it almost doesn't matter. Team Lizard is history.